Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hi, and welcome to TFLP episode 333. And we are recording uh, ahead of time again because we have some vacations coming up and just things going on. And so for the next couple weeks, actually, we are going to be doing a couple of uh, pre-recorded episodes, um, you know, with with all of us uh, so that that way we can continue to keep the regular schedule. So but uh, hopefully here in a couple weeks, we'll be able to get back to uh, being live. So. Uh, but with me this week, uh, I've got uh, Jim over here. Hi. Christian. Hello from the past. And then Anna. Hi. And uh, so so this week, uh, our, our topic is going to be uh, keeping up with the Tronses. Uh, and so we'll, we'll just kind of talk in, in general kind of about our collecting and our experience with collecting and, and, and hopefully it'll kind of help uh, other people out as well with, you know, um, necessarily focusing your collection or, you know, have you ever felt like that, you know, just kind of all the new stuff when the new things hit, you know, do you have to get the new shiny? Are you collecting some of the old stuff and, and all that type of thing? Um, so, I guess I don't know who wants to get started. I'll start. So my best story about keeping up with the Trons is, is that for most of my G1 masterpiece, I got them not because I wanted them and not because I liked them. And I, I didn't really notice at the time. It's taking a lot of reflection, but I got them to keep up with the rest of the community who was getting them and to be a true fan because, you know, if I'm not getting the adult collectible parts of it, you know, am I really a collector? Does that, you know, does getting those legitimize me or on the opposite, does not getting them, not getting those delegitimize me? So I was getting them to be legit. And uh, a couple months ago, I realized that, you know, I've got all these. I don't like displaying them. I've got all my classics and my debt offs. And now it's classics and Bionicles of Studio Series because I'm crazy. <laughs> So, you know, maybe I don't need Masterpiece anymore. Is is it pronounced Detolf? Detolf. I've always said Detolf. Huh, I've always said Detolf. I, I swear this whole time I thought yeah, it was Detolf. Yeah, you guys are yeah. a bunch of Americans. I've always, I've always said Detolf. <laughs> Accurate. Know. Are you, yeah, what's the, what's the official Swedish way to say it? I'm pretty sure it's Detolf because there's Detlef Shrimp. It, it, it might be something like uh, Flergenberg and Bork, Bork, Bork. <laughs> I've always said that. You, you guys can say detail if you want. I've never said it that way. <laughs> so it's the shelf that do, I thought was cool. It's glass. Do you guys feel like you know you have to collect Masterpiece to be a legit collector, or do you go your own way? Do you have a stronger sense of identity than I had and now, uh, now have again? Um, what are your thoughts? I want to see cool off that, because I've only been in the, like, serious collecting community for a little bit, and by that I mean joining, like, all the Facebook groups and paying attention to what the heck other people were doing, and, like, when I first joined, I, it was, like, I don't know, it was really hot in the Fans Toys Dinobots phase, like, everybody was selling those around, everybody was looking for them, everybody was really wanting them, and it almost felt like it was, like, almost a rite of passage, like, to be, like, the real complete fan, you had to go get your fan toy side of bots. And I was always thinking about, like, when am I going to talk myself into doing this? When am I going to start doing fan toy side of bots so that I'll be the real fan, so that I'll be the best collector I can be? Guess what? Still haven't bought any. But um, that definitely felt like the culture at the time. Like, everybody had to get those damn things. Um, right. And that's a perfectly good way to have Dinobots yeah. right there. And I got them. <laughs> 
it was during that phase. I, I think I might hold on to them because they are still cool. But uh, yeah, I definitely remember that. They're pretty definitely cool. Felt that pressure, and I came to that pressure. But for me, like I don't really like really large action figures. Like other than the city bots, which make cool display pieces, I've never really been that into really big toys. Yet I started buying like the the masterpiece size combiners, and then I started thinking about getting the fans toys Dinobots because that was like the big collectibles, the cool things. Well, I, yeah, I don't know about you. Classes enough for me. I, I I don't know about you, but I like big bots, and I can't all lie. Ha <laughs> Um. So so yeah, you know, Christian, I I completely agree with you, and uh, for me, I. I felt a lot of that uh, myself and a lot of that pressure to, you know, kind of get the next, the next figure and complete the masterpiece collection and do the next checkbox off of, off of that. And even though I wasn't necessarily enjoying all of them, and there was a lot of the figures, especially several years ago where they really weren't very good figures. Um, I know the, the older KFC figures, for example, were just, you know, they, they just weren't high quality. Um, but it, it, it gave you a checkbox that you're like, okay, when I get that wind charger, or when I get that Ollie uh, or whatever, that, that that way I can put the other figure on it. But it almost felt more like an obligation than it felt like that I'm doing this for me. I'm, I'm like doing it for other people. But the silly thing about that is, is it's like, well, I mean, I don't know your collections like your, you know, my personal collection. Like, I mean, I can, you know, a lot of people can see what's behind me on the show. But for the most part, it's like you're not really displaying it for like other people necessarily. Right. You know, you're really doing it for yourself. The other collectors have ever seen my toy room. None. Not a single one. Mine neither. Yeah. So and, who, and, who am I? Who am I collecting? I don't even take lots of pictures of mine. Who is right. it there for? Right. And, and so me? then. Yeah, so like good. I could tell you. It should you, just be wife, what I want. My wife does not care, like, a, like the display. You know, she's not impressed by by my Transformers display. So, um, and, and so that isn't that such a bummer sometimes. Like, I make a really cool display and I show my husband, and he's just like, "Okay, that's that's good, Anna. Good job." <laughs> Meh. Yeah. Uh, my cat does not care either. So, but yeah, no, I, I do. I do think for the people that that do take a lot of pictures, like I know Duran does that, um, and there's a lot of other collectors that do the same thing. But I, I'm sure I'm kind of the same way as you, Christian. We're like, well, my my photography skills are not, you know, up to you know some of the other people in the community, and so I'm like, why, you know, when when Sixo or Maz or Duran or whoever it might be are taking these really cool pictures. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not going to do better than they're doing. Like they're already doing that. So like, what is, what does that need to, to be? And so like, I don't really feel the need to try to show off to other people. And so, um, yeah. So I usually, again, outside of what you can see behind me, I'm usually not, I'm not posting a lot of pictures unless someone has requested and said, can I see X figure next to Y figure, then I'll, you know, try to try to take a picture for them just to see so that they can see how they look. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you mentioned wind charger to say that you know, that was the ultimate checkbox figure, because that's the one that made me realize that I didn't like that. I was collecting all those figures. It really did feel like an obligation. But when the boost reissue came around, I've been looking for them for probably a year at that point. Cause I, I was almost finished with the G one season one masterpiece collection. I was like, I'm almost done. Got to get wind charger and clip dropper. And so boost is coming back around and everyone says it's a you know, pain to transform and no one actually likes it. It's just the only one. I was like, you know, if I'm not going to enjoy it and I already know that before I even buy it, why am I trying to buy it? I should stop. And then I did. It was great. <laughs> yeah. And, and, I honestly reached the same point as well. Um, so last year I went and sold all of my masterpiece figures um, in like one shot, sold it to another local dealer um, for, for a lump sum and got, got rid of most of them. And so in that standpoint, and then I, I had already stopped collecting fans toys um, at that point, just because I, they had a couple figures uh, that I, I did not like transforming. I broke one transforming it. And so I 
But yeah, so I had already cut that off. But the thing is, is that to me, I feel like, and I don't know about you, sometimes it's almost like you get a figure and like a week later, you're like, it's almost like anticlimactic kind of thing where you're like, you, you've been anticipating like whatever this fan toys figure is for like two years now. Right. Like you've waited like the pictures the you know, all the stuff up there, you like, th- uh, there was an early review on YouTube. You go, you watch that or whatever. Everyone's talking about it. Certain people are getting it and all that kind of thing. You do all that. You, and then you, you get it, you get it out of the box. You're like so excited. You transform it a couple of times and then you put it on your shelf. And then and it I, I don't forever. know about you, but it's like, it lives there forever, and I never, like, you know, you might pick it up every once in a while, but but for me, a lot of times, it's like, after that initial kind of thing, it's like, it's done. And so then I'm like, what the heck am I doing? Like, this is a, you know, what, whatever the figure may cost, um, you know, this is a, a large purchase, and, like, am I getting the enjoyment? And then, you know, I go and grab some Legends figure or whatever, and, you know, these are the ones that I'm, like, picking up off my shelf and always, like, messing with and, and, and fiddling with, whereas the, you know, those the Masterpiece figures, I mean, you know, some of them are fun to fiddle with and, and mess with, but then a lot of them, it's like, well, you know, I, I, I have to devote an hour to go transform, you know, whatever, certain figures, I, I think that's a, I think that's a large part of it too. Is, uh, you know, because with, with myself, there's a bunch of figures that I got uh, from the uh, uh, Prime Wars trilogy, because I've always been a sucker for combiners, and you know, so when I saw we had the opportunity to get, you know, Bruticus or or uh, Menasaur or someone like that, you know, I, I, huh? Be careful. It's my favorite stuff you're talking about right now. Oh, I know, I know. It's, it's, it's like crack for a lot of people, but, but I would go and I would complete this combiner and then this combiner and, and then the Titans return happened and, you know, you had the, the headmasters with the little vehicles and then you can have Braun driving Braun, which is weird, but Super weird. It works. I, I know it's, just, but you, you, you do it just because you can. Uh, and then power of the primes happen and you have more combiners, you know, and now that I've got uh, almost all of them, they're kind of sitting there. I mean, I, I honestly, I don't know the last time I transformed Defensor. Uh, my Computron is in its box right now. Along with, well, uh, yeah, uh, along with Victorion. But I will say the one thing about the Combiner Wars combiners, the biggest plus for them compared to third-party combiners is that, like, you know, when I got in, like, Qu- Make Toys Quantron, like, their third-party Computron, right? It is yeah. such a pain to transform that and it, it is a be- absolutely beautiful figure, really well-articulated. Really cool. You know, it is really cool, right? But, mm. gosh darn it, like, you know, I transform it once and then I get it to combine mode, and then I'm like, I'm done. I'm never, I never want to transform this again. Yeah. And I know that, that uh, Fans Project uh, you know, Minnesota, we've talked about him a couple times. Uh, you know, it's kind of the same thing. But I do feel like that a lot of the Combiner Wars combiners that I do feel like that, like I, I will, you know, like I know Bruticus, I've taken him apart a couple times mm-hmm. and, and fiddled with him back and forth and, you know, flipped him into their various modes because it's, it's pretty easy to, to do that on those. Um, so, I mean, you know, obviously you get to a point in your collection, depending on how many figures you get. And, you know, I mean, I think that that's, that's part of the issue is, is that you're like, okay, well, I, I've got too many. I need to, you know, I'm, I'm not really showing enough attention to, you know, each individual figure because I, you know, it's like a sea of transformers. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of, a lot of them have a, a lot of extra steps like, uh, you know, I don't know, just, just at random, just say the Cyberjet hooligan here, right? You've got, you know, decent articulation, you know, shoulders, elbows, knees, hips, all that, head swivel, uh, you know, and you, you can fit you with this thing until you're blue in the face and it, it just, it, it never gets old. But then you get something that's more complex, like say Revenge of the Fallen Mixmaster. So many more steps and 
you're more inclined to want to grab the, the hooligan than the Mixmaster. Mm-hmm. Mixmaster's a nightmare, but looks so good. But it's so fun. But it's so tedious. Yeah, really yeah. You need a solid hour to transform that figure mm-hmm. back and forth. Yeah. Or well, you need a solid 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the more expensive, uh, e- even with third party, a lot of the more expensive uh, figures tend to be uh, uh, more complex, have, have more steps. Uh, and I, I think in, in some ways, if, if, if you get too complex, it can kind of take away from it overall. Well, it, I'm glad you're hitting on that stuff because I had a, a precursor revelation to if I'm not enjoying it, why am I buying it? Mm. It's that, you know, with, with the, the complex nature of these expensive figures, I came to the realization that I really wanted to collect toys, not necessarily collectibles. So whereas Masterpiece are like, they're definitely collectibles. They're not toys. They're, you know, for a dog. Yeah. Anyway, I was like, <laughs> I want to collect something that's simple. Because right at the time, it was, you know, Prime Wars trilogy stuff versus Masterpiece stuff. And I was having so much more fun with the Prime Wars stuff, especially Combiner Wars. Titans was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably the primes deserve better, but uh, never saw primal. I uh, got mine online. I, yeah, I, I, I do not believe primal exists. Well, he does, but it's yeah, it, it, it's uh, essentially that. You know, I wanted to collect something that was easy and fun, and that's why I ended up displaying all my classics in my display cases because I liked them. So it, it took a couple stages to get to where I got to, but. Yes, the first one was I want to collect toys, not necessarily collectibles. Well, and I you think toys, they're action figures. <laughs> we kill them toys. No, I got to play with them. I, I do. I do think too, though. Um, the you know some of the more difficult ones. It is very interesting, especially the first time that you're going through it, like trying to solve that you know sure, Rubik's puzzle. cube, that puzzle. I, I, I do think having that, like, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain because you don't want to have, um, you don't want it to be too simple because then it's boring, but then you don't want it to be, you know, so complex that, again, like, once you have a certain number of figures, you know, you just don't want to, uh, to pick it up. So, and, and I think a lot of times, too, those, those more, uh, difficult, tr- uh, transformations makes for a figure that looks better and that is more articulated too. So well, Anna, what do you think? You, I think you play with your toys way more than any of us play with ours. I was trying to interrupt a few times. And I just had to bark real quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry about that. It's just an impulse sometimes. Um, so what I was going to say, well, I have so many things to say now because I've been saving them up. Um, as far as like, you know, the whole play of my toys thing, um, definitely, definitely that's what's pushed my collecting a really different direction. That's why I'm collecting legends now is because I have this guy in a really fun pose right now that amuses me. I put him in like a good dozen poses that I think are really fun and expressive in my timonium. I probably also transformed him like 10 or 15 times and hey, his buggy mode looks like a golf cart, but whatever. It's fun. It's easy to do. Both modes are fun to play with. Um, I actually enjoy owning this guy, not just looking at him once a month when I glance over at my collection, not just playing with him when I get him first out of the box, but I actually, like, you know, have a better experience owning something when I pick it up and mess with it. The problem that's caused for me is back in the day, I used to have only the few toys I owned that were actually fun to play with around me on my desk. But now a lot of my collection is like that, so I don't know what to put near me, what I'm going to mess with. Mm-hmm. Um, the winner so far is an enemy, but because um, oh. he stays here and nothing else does. Um, <laughs> um, well, okay, this has been here for a long time. Let me admit that. This this is always near me, I'm no sorry, matter boy. what. <laughs> uh, Christian walked away. He didn't get to see Shocklock make an appearance. Oh, Shocklock's the best. See, you yeah, know, you miss them. all all of but, these people ask, "What are you? What do I do with this extra shockwave armor that came in the pack?" Right? And there, there you go. That's what you do with the extra shockwave. This is your stuff. answer. Is right. you have fun with your darn toys? Like this to me was an amusing thing that I did one day. It was fun. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to say, honestly, um, 
going back to the thread you all were kind of forming with the Combiner Wars, is, A, with Combiner Wars, I felt this pressure, this kind of annoying pressure, to buy combiners that had absolutely no meaning to me, like the Optimus combiner and those sorts of things. Um, sometimes when I see people with the uh, the Cyclonus based combiner, I'm always like, "Ooh, I could buy that. That's interesting." And I'm like, "Wait, what do I want that for? Nothing, just completion." But what I really noticed it for that amuses me is the idea of um, of upgrades. And that was a fun conversation we had between me, Christian, and Lucas recently when I bought a Unite Warriors Computron that only came with the hands and feet upgrades. And Christian's reaction was kind of like, oh, get that big up, get the um, Transform Dreamwave upgrade. It's so it's so good. It's so important. And Lucas was like, nah, you don't need it. And I ended up not buying it. But then also feeling like that pressure, like it could be a little bit better, maybe, in someone's eyes. But it's actually I, I good enough for you. me as it is. I know, I, I let you down. And... But it's good enough for me. Like, I would literally be buying it for someone else's expectations. It's like my desire with that toy is already met, but someone else thought that, you know, it needs to look a little beefier. Or a lot of people say the chest isn't good enough, and they say the same thing with the bottom of this, and they buy those upgrades for them. But I don't Mm. like the upgrades as much as I like the base look, so I shouldn't buy it. But other people should. And it's just interesting to kind of see that expectation. And the same thing happens with labels and um, like paint upgrades and all sorts of things you can do where you might start to feel pressure from other people saying like, ooh, this, um, uh, it's not repro labels anymore, it's toy hacks. Um, yeah. This toy hacks upgrade it makes things so much better. But then to me, I'm like, it makes it covered in stickers and that's annoying. <laughs> But what do you guys think about that? Do you ever feel pressure to buy upgrades or stickers just because other people get them or other people think they look good, but you don't really care? I think that Computron story is still really funny because I <laughs> sold my Unite Warriors Computron because I didn't think it was good enough. And I really liked the Hasbro one that I had upgraded. But when the images for the Transform Dreamwave kit came out, I had to rebuy the Unite Warriors one because it looks <laughs> so good with the kit. So it's a completely different experience. Uh, you mentioned the Abominus one. I bought that, and I hated that kid. So who knows? I just don't need it. Like, it's not an upgrade that I wanted. It's an upgrade that other people thought it needed. To me, I don't need it. I put it on, and that same night I took it back off and sold it. Like, immediately I turned <laughs> it around. I was like, no, this this upgrade kit is bleh. Well, and the thing I think is interesting, too, is is that some of the stuff you have to hold in your hands and you have to fiddle with it. Like, you can't just rely on what other people are saying, what the community says or whatever, um, or pictures even, because it, it's really, you know, Indeed. you, like, you know, and how you, you know, kind of interact with the, with the thing, too. Um, you know, I've had several you know, upgrade kits, uh, the same way. And like, I've sold some of the upgrade kits. I've kept some and sold some, whatever, just because it, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to tell. And everyone has a different experience as well and, and different opinions. So, you know, some people might favor, and, you know, of course the whole point of those kits is, is so that you can get it to a uh, more G one, you know, more of a G one look. Um, and then, you know, other people that, um, you know, maybe you don't want a G1 look. Maybe you want something something new. Or maybe you want whatever that Defensor kit Anna was looking at was about. Oh, I Defensor really want with that. The, it's Defensor with a cigar in his mouth. Who? Oh, not why? that one. I want the C plus one, the really expensive one. Oh, the really expensive one. <laughs> oh, hold, hold on, hold on. The Defensor with a cigar? Yeah, yeah. the Transform yeah. Dreamwave. One a of the heads that comes with it. A he has combiner a cigar. that is partially made up of medical vehicles yes. smoking. Correct. And it's supposed yeah. to be like IDW based. I gotta tell you, I've read every issue of IDW there is. That never happens. Cup does it. But medical vehicles yeah. tend to have compressed oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Someone needs to figure out why Transform Dreamwave decided to do that. It's it's a weird, weird choice. I'm not really I just, sure. I could kind of see it with with cup or with there's sure. like age of extinction cup. hound something like that where it's yep. like a, a grizzled soldier basically cup. defensor yeah, yeah. <sighs> it's really weird yeah 
But so then there's um there's other upgrades like that I really want to get like um that uh the siege ultra magnus that mm-hmm. most of you guys have said was really cool and you liked it and it's fine how it is that thing like I almost want to take it off my shelf because of how hideous it is until I get leg upgrades to make the legs a little bit longer. Because I just, I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks with the short legs. Like, I really need little leg extenders, which people are starting to make. So I'll one have thing, One out. thing I actually think is really cool is, is that uh, I felt like for a while that we weren't seeing a lot of upgrades. Like, that, you know, it was huge with Combiner Wars. And then it kind of just, especially with Power of the Primes, started fizzling out a little bit. And so I really feel like that lately, and, it, and part of it has been because of, you know, uh, the 3D printing, you know, thing um, that it seems like there's been several small shops that have made some really cool little upgrades. And even Toy Hacks, who you mentioned before, um, that, you know, they'll make uh, I I know they're starting to make some uh, stuff that goes along with, you know, upgrades and whatnot that go along with their stickers. And I think a lot of that stuff is is really neat. Um, You know, it kind of adds a little extra uh, to the figure. The tough thing is, is on, on a lot of it is, is that it would be a $15 upgrade for a $20 figure. And you're like, you know, do you really want to put that much extra into it? But if it's something where it's like one of your favorite figures and, and, and whatever, you know, it's definitely, you know, you, you have to decide whether it's worth it, uh, you know, for you, but. See the auto trooper kit that just came out for Prowl. Oh, That's another thing. good example because you guys were talking about it. Like, it was this positive, really cool thing. I looked at it. I was like, that's a neat upgrade kit, but I have no desire to have an auto trooper in my collection whatsoever. But I still uh, thought about you? ordering it. I had no desires for it, but I really hey. considered ordering it because you guys were pumped for it. I didn't. Uh, I ended up I'm not so getting it. That one. So they, they made an auto trooper kit for the Siege, Siege Pro. Yeah. yeah, it's actually really cool. Interesting. Like, if you great. want an auto trooper. Well, course, what, I what, what I did is... What, what, what I wanted was back during, like, Combiner Wars, I wanted a Ratchet, but I didn't want to mess with the BotCon mess. Uh, so what I did is I got a, a spare Prowl and a spare First Aid, and I just did a head swap. And then my minor repaint here and there, just little, like, vents and things to differentiate one from the other. And as a result of the head swap, I ended up with a Ratchet, and the leftover parts I'm using as kind of an auto trooper. I just had oh, to do a little, cool. I'll do a little resizing with the with the ball joints with some like nail polish or some little sandpaper here and there. Um, but cool. yeah, so that, that's that's what I'm using is that only because Auto Trooper was in Creo, and I'm like, you know what, it's close enough. I'm gonna do it. Well, and I, I think that that's a really cool thing, you know, and also something that makes your collection your own. You know, you're not just, again, just, you know, put, getting the same figure as everybody else. You're putting some creativity into it and, and you know, making it a a unique collection. So um, I made that Reaper Labels combiner and, and bought an upgrade kit for it. Made the whole thing. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I, know I, what that, I know what that's about. I typically don't, um, you know, I, I, like I'm not having other people sway me on the toy hacks, uh, but I do. I, I was getting into a phase where every month when the toy hack stuff would come out, I'd be like, ooh, like that looks cool. That looks cool. And then I got like a stack of stickers and I'm like, OK, I don't have enough time to actually sit down and apply all these. Um, and so I did the ones that I really wanted to do. Um, and then some of the extras, I went ahead and, you know, sold some of those stickers just cause, you know, I'm like, I, I really don't need to be, uh, doing that. And I think that Hasbro has done a pretty good job, uh, for the most part with the, a lot of their figures in, in recent years that I personally don't feel the need to, uh, to upgrade them with, with stickers. But I think that back in Combiner Wars that like you had to get like, like the wheel jack is it, that, that figure is garbage if you don't you know, get all those stickers to, to upgrade them, in my opinion. No, I, I think that's fun, though, because you say, like, you had to do it. And that, like, that very perception kind of puts that little bit of pressure on people who didn't. And, like, I just find that really interesting. Like, and I don't mean it like a bad thing for you or anything. I just mean it like if I now I'm going to look over at my shelf. I'm going to look at my Combiner Wars figures. I'm going to try to find the ones 
where it feels like I was supposed to have bought toy hacks for and consider buying them because it's like, oh, they're not detailed enough. Lucas said so. <laughs> so, so. So what you're saying is, is on the show that we're talking about, peer pressuring people, I'm peer pressuring you into getting more stickers. So there we go. I think we're all going to peer pressure each other in this show because we're going to end up talking about some of our favorite stuff. You know, I think this shows that a certain amount of peer pressure, and it, it's not malicious necessarily, is that uh, you know, a certain amount of this peer pressure is going to come from being interactive in this fandom. You know, if, if we were all solo, didn't know each other, didn't interact with anybody outside of us, you know, our, our collecting experiences might be very different. And that that actually makes you want to throw out like a another like subtopic off of this, and that's just kind of like to go with the keeping up with the transes idea is let's say theoretically that there was this figure that was going around and it wasn't incredibly expensive um but everyone was touting it as like basically the best figure ever so just you know something similar to that um new age jazz that's going around right now but let's say you know i'm holding it right now and this is the this is the best figure ever everyone's constantly saying how good it is everybody's constantly talking about it the boards are just you know alive with it but it's a character or a thing you have no interest in. Okay. So, you know, like for me, it's Unicron Trilogy. For Lucas, it's a Beast Wars figure. It's something that we just personally don't collect and don't care about, but it's the best figure ever. Everyone loves it. What do you do at that point? Do you do you go ahead and buy it just that one time because it's the best figure ever and every Transformers collector should own the best figure ever? Or are you able to just say like, well, it's still not what I like, even though it's the best figure ever? I did that with MP10 and 12. I mean, MP10 is a really good figure, though. It really it's is. Pretty good. I, I paid way too much for it, and it, it always has had that stigma afterwards. But the various ones I've gotten since then are fine. Which one was 12 again? That's sideswipe. Sideswipe. I hate Sideswipe. Okay, good. Eh. Poor Sideswipe. No. I like Sideswipe. I just don't like MP12. Oh, I should be worth that. Best figure ever. I mean, it wasn't something that you liked. I mean, I'd probably get it. I probably would. Yeah, I mean, I I think for me, th- this happened to me a lot. Hold it. So so back in the day, and, and honestly, like Maz, uh, when he was more active and doing a lot of third party photography, like it really swayed me quite a bit with like a lot of his stuff because there were and and six o as well. Um, both of those guys are just fabulous photographers. And so there'd be some figure that I'd be on the fence about or just whatever. And they would, and, and, and they're also very excited about the, the figures that they do. And so I, I would end up saying, you know, they'd be like, Oh, this is great. And they would post this picture of them looking amazing. And I was like, all right, I got to get it. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, so yeah, no, I, I've, I've definitely been in that situation, you know, myself, but I think a lot of it too is, is like, I know for, for me, I, I like to just check out the new stuff and new engineering and, and, and all that kind of thing. So a lot of times I'm more likely to, you know, buy a figure and then go and flip it, you know, a little while later, just, uh, just so that I could, you know, have checked it out. I don't think there's any other best figures ever that I've had to pick up because I've had to get them. I can think of a few. Uh, the one but you're there. actually resisting it really well right now because a lot of them are in the Legends area at the moment. Like the Jazz, like I said, people are really touting that thing as one of the like, most impressive little engineering things. And people talked about that little Bumblebee, the flipper, um, just as much. And you haven't fallen for him. The one that I'm really going up against right now is uh, Meg Toys Meteor. That's a good. You're still resisting. Still resisting. Not the, not because it doesn't look good or anything. I just don't think I need another Masterpiece Starship. Game. I'm very happy with the one I have. Um, I'm very attached to it because it took a long time to track it down and to track down the Coronation Kit for it. So I'm happy with what I have. I like Star Scream. It looks amazing. Uh, if they ever did, you know, some sort of kooky recolor of it, I might get it. Like really the GT cool. version? <laughs> no, it'd have to be one that we haven't gotten before, like uh, Sandstorm or something, or Black Death, or you know something interesting. But she I don't looks, think I need another Starscream. 
the G2 Ramjet. Mm. Mm, G2 Ramjet. That would uh, be a Ram good way Jet. to get the... Something like that. G2 Thundercracker. Sure. Yeah, that would be good. I would absolutely buy Action Master Thundercracker as, as the Make Toys Meteor one. Or like... Yeah. um. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other best figures ever that may not fit into your collection. Um, what about uh, Animated Rodimus? He is something that people talk about as being, you know, one of the best Transformers ever made, especially considering when he was made, the level of articulation, just how fun of a toy he is. I had no interest in owning an animated collection. I got a chance to buy an animated Rodimus for, like, you know, under retail price. I got him for, like, $12 back when he was still going for a lot more than that. And I just said, okay, best way ever, I have to own one. And what did it cost? It cost me to have a whole shelf I animated that I probably didn't actually want originally, but suddenly I did um, because I bought the best figure ever that didn't actually fit into my collection. Yeah, I mean, I feel like for me that if it's a figure that I have no interest in whatsoever, it's not going to sway me. It's really more that if I'm on the fence and I'm like, I kind of was thinking about getting it. Because, like, I can tell you, I know a lot of people have come out and said that, like, that MP Dinobot at the time, they're like, oh, this is figure of the year, you know. And I think even that the new um, uh, Masterpiece Megatron, the Beast Wars Megatron mm-hmm. too, a lot of people have gushed over both of those figures. And they, I think that they look absolutely amazing. The paint on them looks really great. Um, and they're very impressive figures. Um, but, yeah, for, for me and my collection, it's like, yeah, you know, I really care. So that... So I don't I don't think that that sways me as much as that if it's something where I'm on the fence about and I'm like yeah, I probably shouldn't and then you know then someone is like oh this is this is fantastic then it's like okay I gotta I gotta get it then so but, I'm nervous about it because all the time I'm thinking about getting rid of my masterpiece and going to just like collecting as much legends as I can and I'm always nervous that that next masterpiece that's the best figure ever quote unquote is going to come out, and I'm going to fall again. I'm going to have to get that one, and then it's not going to look right without its friends, and then, you know, so-and-so, and we continue going, and I end up rebuying things, which for me, rebuying things is, like, anathema. I think that's wrong. I will never, I'm trying to never do it. Yeah, who would ever rebuy figures that they've already purchase previously right why do you think i give you so much crap about it it's because it's completely outside of my own nature (laughs) so but yeah one thing though i i will say kind of the flip side to this is i do think you know talking about this on the show tonight but then you know i know we've all kind of had uh prior conversations about this is, is i i do think that um you know talking in the community, talking with your friends, all that type of thing kind of helps you decide like what, how you want to focus your collection. And so I know Christian, you had kind of talked about that before where you kind of finally came to the realization about masterpiece. But part of that was, is kind of talking it out and like, what, you know, what are your collecting priorities um, to where the, you know, before that you didn't, you know, like you, you, you know, you may not have necessarily realized that until you kind of like had that whole discussion. And it's it's nothing against masterpiece. I think they're some of the best engineered figures around. Uh, speaking, you know, same for legends. It's just that I, I don't make it a priority to collect those. Well, and I one think that, every now and then, maybe, but I'm not going after them. Well, just because except for the Beast Wars, now. <laughs> even that I've been kind of reconsidering lately. The thing is, is, I can't is blame you. Ju- just because you don't like purchase something or buy or whatever, collect something doesn't necessarily mean that you don't like it. Like you don't have to buy everything, you know, like I know I realize Transformers are, uh, you know, there's a lot of characters. And so, you know, that naturally, you know, in order to have a collection, you're going to have a fair amount of figures. But it's like your Transformers collection could be five figures. It doesn't have to be, you know, whatever, 20 figures, 50 figures, 100, 1,000. Like, it doesn't, you know, it could be as big as, as you want it to be. And so that's the thing is, is that, you know, if it's, 
five masterpiece figures, like if that's what, you know, what you like, you know, then that, that's great. Um, or if it's like, you know what, you really like five mainline figures or, or whatever it might be, you know, or if you're like, you know, Hey, you really collect it because you collect with your kid. And so like you collect, uh, the, the site, the new cyberverse, you know, figures because you have fun with the cartoon with your kids and you guys can, it's something that you can do together. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's great, but then you, you don't have, you know, you can appreciate things you don't buy, you know? I agree with that. Yeah, it took me a long time to figure that one out, but yes. I'm still working on it. <laughs> No, I know. I, I, I'm, I'm the same way. And I know that, uh, you know, I recently got back into Masterpiece myself, but it wasn't really because of the community necessarily. It's that, I mean, I just wanted to have the, you know, for for myself, the ultimate version of certain characters and, and what I really liked. And, and there's been a few figures, and, and honestly, it's been partially peer pressure, I guess, to where, you know, um, that... Anna's brought some figures over for me to check out, like the, um, the again, Meteor. It, it was one of the ones. And then that uh, that light of the Magic Square Optimus Prime figure that, um, you know, and so I, I got to check out both of those figures. And I'm like, oh, wow, like this is, you know, the the coolest ver You know, I don't have another version of, of this character that is as cool and so I ended up kind of going down back down the, the masterpiece rabbit hole, but it was, it's for different reasons. It wasn't necessarily that I'm doing it to, to be part of the community. It's just like, I right. wanted and to have, I think you got rid of your checkbox figures too. You got, right. you got rid of that. You wanted to have that star. So you wanted to have that optimist, not that you needed to have them to check a box in your collection. Right. Right. So, and, and that's what I've, you know, kind of shifted a, a, a little bit because you know, I've always been really big into uh, the uh, third party uh, chug, I guess I should say, like the Mastermind Creations figures and, and some of that. And so C just kind of like almost taken that over for me where I, I, I almost kind of really prefer the Siege figures just because they're 20 bucks or 30 bucks and they've got great articulation and, and all that type of thing. And they're solid figures. So, uh, you know, for me, it's like, I just want to have one great version of Optimus Prime and Starscream and a few others, um, you know, to put on my living room shelf. And then the rest, it's like, you know, most of my collection is still focused on, you know, chug and, and, and things like that. Yeah. To peer pressured in a good way to help you get your ultimates. I think that's good. Yeah, it, peer pressure is not always the worst pressure. thing ever. Maybe it's not peer pressure, peer advice, something, D different term. It related, Crowdsourcing. But Crowdsourcing your opinion. Crowds there you go. Proceed it, <laughs> Well, you know, the, the, the opposite of peer pressure is FOMO. If you do it yourself, you know, you're afraid of missing out on something great. So th there's that too. So let me throw out the opposite side of this. What about when there's something out there, and I fall into this a lot with the two of you, since I'm always talking to you two, um, Christian and Lucas, I fall into this a lot where let's say there's something out there that you personally really like that everyone else thinks is either crappy, um, not the best thing ever, or entirely unethical. <laughs> what do you do then? When the fandom is pushing against something, you know, for instance, say that, say you were the one person who um, really loved the original Armada hotshot, um, say that that was your favorite toy ever, you know, everyone else tells you that it was one of the atrocities of Armada, um, or, eh, atrocity, but... You said Sideswipe, mm. Yeah, I couldn't remember which one he was, but you're right. He's the true atrocity of Armada. No, the so the one I go see. for is the Age of Extinction Leader Prime. Everyone hates that toy except me. Everyone hates it. I just love it to death. Yeah, so how does that feel? When other people in the community, like when, you know, people make a list of worst Transformers ever, <laughs> and one of your favorites is on there. I just don't agree. I like so much about it that, you know, it, it sometimes feels weird that 
people hate on something that I like so much, but in the end, it's my collection, so I I, just, I like what I like. Jim, do you like a, a worst Transformer ever? I'm just trying to think of, uh, of of some of the some of the worst ones. Um, one that comes to mind had actually some uh, some great detail on it, some some great molding, and uh, it was a decent idea behind the character. But uh, Cybertron Vector Prime, love. Is if you think about it, like it you, you, you've got the, the space jet with the translucent blue wings that like to bend and curl for reasons. To transform it, you unfold the legs, flip down the nose cone, stand him up. I mean, yeah, you can flip out the feet and raise the shoulder pads to uh, technically that, that's, that's about it. So I came out when I was a teenager or a late teenager and I remember getting it and thinking like, oh no, this is so simple. It's not good enough because it's so simplistic, even though I really liked it. <laughs> it's a good figure. Yeah. It's really cool. I still like it, even though I sold mine probably during that time when I thought it was too simple. Hmm. But yeah, there, there's there's been a few of them over the years that have been kind of kind of lackluster. You know, or uh, where where you you have you have higher expectations, and then you finally get it in hand, and then and you're just you're just kind of disappointed. It's like I waited this whole time, and I I spent you know x amount of money, and why? Uh, but yeah, Cybertron Vector Prime uh, for sure was was definitely one of those because you know they, they were they were uh, pushing the whole thing of hey, there's more than one Prime in Transformers, and it was this whole thing. Uh, I I don't I don't recall if that was before they did the whole uh, first thirteen primes in the in the comics or, or not. I think that was maybe prior to that. I'm not sure. Um, Just prior, same, same series, but uh, that was like more 2006 and Cybertron started. Okay, by, okay. So around the same time, but a little bit before. Yeah, because uh, and, and then you had uh, yeah, because that, that's when it was still leaking out as as Galaxy Force. We hadn't actually received the Cybertron mm-hmm. uh, English version. Yep. Uh, yet, uh, but the, you had like, like Nitro Convoy and uh, you know wh- whatever Scourge was Beast Convoy or something. Flame Convoy. What was the Flame Convoy? I don't know. Was... And Live Convoys Evac. Why do I know this? Yeah. Stuff? yeah. This you guys <laughs> uh, then they bring them over yes. here, and all of a sudden, none of them are a Prime except for Vector Prime. You've got Metroplex. Uh, you, you said Evac, Scourge, and uh, what was? Override. 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 <laughs> I can't want to say overrun. I'm like, no, that was the mini con. Um, but yeah, I mean, the uh, Armada trilogy was was uh, full of uh, figures such as that. Um, try, I'm, I'm trying to think if uh, so. If someone said that your favorite figure, you know, if it was a cons- a wide consensus that your favorite figure was the worst Transformers figure of all time, would that affect your enjoyment of that figure? Would you dig in harder? Um, you know, wh- where are you on that? There, there, there are several factors there uh, as far as what would make it to uh, constitute a, a favorite. You know, it could be a sentimental attachment for maybe it was it was a holiday gift. Um, it could be, I don't know, just, just a favorite character in a newer incarnation of that character. Uh, I mean, it, it could be any number of things uh, as, as far as that goes. Heck, uh one, one that comes to mind, actually, one, one of my favorite uh, characters of all time, and I, I've mentioned this on the podcast before, is Horry the Bull, you know, with, uh, with with Kreb. His name is Kreb, not Terry Bull. Sorry. Stickler about that. Um, but then Titan's Return comes around, you know, 30-odd years later, and we finally get, you know, a newer version of that character as a Titan Master. And here I am waiting like, okay, are they going to give us the Headmaster Juniors? Is that going to be a thing in this line? Mm. Nope. 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 Not yet. We, did, we didn't get, I mean, I mean we, we get, okay, we got the heads, uh, mostly, except for, what was the fire truck? Uh, Force uh, Huh? Well, in Force Master, Force, in Master Force, it was Shooter, uh, okay. I think. But anyway, Fire truck. Uh, we we got uh, we got Siren, we got Night Beat slash Minerva, uh, and then we got uh, Horrible and uh, the other two. 
anyway, at, with, with their little vehicles or their little weapon modes, but we didn't actually get full versions of those. Mm-hmm. And of any series, uh, I would have expected, you know, them to bring in the headmaster juniors to kind of fill in the ranks uh, in that. that. That would have been the perfect line to do it. And then all we're left with faces was, listed at the end of the year. They could be still coming. I have hope. Well, I mean, we, we may yet see them in, in uh, the uh, War for Cybertron trilogy. Who, who's to say? Uh, but uh, as far as Titans Return, all, all we're left with is just the little heads, Titan Masters, and their little companion vehicles or weapon, animal, whatever. And I, I was, I was kind of disappointed. I mean, yeah, yes, horrible slash terrible crab, whatever you want to call him. One of my all time favorite figures. Uh, I would say it's up there with me the same way Weird Wolf is with Duran. Uh, but, but I just, I, I was, I, as much as I was happy to see that figure return for the first time in decades, I was disappointed in the, in the implementation of that. Uh, the, the one thing that's kind of, giving me a little bit of hope, though, is uh, they, they seem to have this pattern where they'll release a, a figure in a smaller version, or like whether it be Legends or Titan Master or what have you, and then waves later or the next line, the next series, uh, will eventually get that figure. Uh, case in point, Combiner War Shockwave. Okay? We now have Seed Shockwave. Okay? Uh, Brawn. We got Braun as the Titan Master in Power of the Primes. We got Legends Cl- Legend Scale Braun. I mean, just, it, it, they don't do it with every figure, but I, I noticed that it does tend to happen quite a bit. And Repugnus, Repugnus was yes. an important one. Yes, prime example. He's so cute. Power Repugnus. of the Prime example. Well, Even. well, the one the one thing that uh, frustrates me a little bit sometimes with Hasbro is, you know, say if it's one of my favorite characters that they release, but then they don't produce the character that i want necessarily so it's kind of like that with, with with you but like say for example galvatron right like he's okay. he's one of my favorite characters and i do not like the titans return version at all and i i really just want them you know what they've done with a character like say springer or um you know a bunch of other figures that they've done where they've produced some fabulous molds of them it's like i just want that for galvatron i just want I, I, you know, so, uh oh, lost Jim. Jim's gone. I think he's still here. Oh, there. Nope, he is. I'm still You're here. Back. You're back. I'm still here. I didn't leave. I just had uh, to kill the camera for a second. But yeah, so that that's the thing that kind of frustrates me a little bit with Hasbro, and part of, and part of the reason that I feel like I I can't go, you know, only do Hasbro and nothing else is because some of those key characters, like they just aren't quite good enough for me. And so then I, you know, I, I can't mix it in and I, I, I want to have a full, like, I don't know, my, my OCD, I want to have a full line of, you know, uh, of good characters of like the core characters that I want. Um, and so, I, yeah, so that's kind of my issue. I, I can kind of, I can kind of relate to you on that one. Um, there's a, there, there's a, a bunch of times where there have been like third party figures that, you know, are, are, you know, amazing characters, amazing molds, whatever you're, but they, they wouldn't necessarily fit into the, the aesthetic of the lines that you're collecting. And if, if you're like me, a lot of times you tend to be on a budget. Mo- most of the time, what you, what you can afford is the Hasbro version and not the third party. Uh, you know, unless it's just something like an add on kit, but even then, uh, if you do, if you do make the purchase, then, does it fit in with the line? Does it scale well? You know, are, are the details too cartoon accurate compared to the toy accurate of the line or, or what, whatever your reason is? Um, and then in addition to that, you said, you know, uh, you know, they, they might not make the figures that, that I want. Um, and that, that as soon as you said that, I, I thought of one that uh, we have coming up here in the next, what, two, two waves or so is uh, Slam Dance. Um, uh, what, one of my very first Transformers, uh, that was ever bought for me as a child was G1 Slam Dance. It was the two pack of Grand Slam and Rain Dance, the Autobot cassettes. And we've not seen those characters in toy form in 30 years, in, in any form. Not, not a reissue, not, not anything. 
And now we're, we're getting, uh, you know, a, an updated version of that in the, the, the form of a, a repaint. I don't know if it's retooled at all. Uh, no, from, it's, it's total uh, repaint. Is, is it just repaint? No, no remolding at all? No. From, uh, from Flywheels or Skytread, whatever they're calling them now. It looks uh, good. For, for Siege. And what's throwing me off with, uh, is that they have Rand, Randance, the jet, as the upper torso and yeah. Grand Slam, the tank, as the lower torso. That switched. And they, they tried to offset that a little bit by on Raindance, they'll, they, they put some of the, the red paint details so that when he's combined, he, he doesn't look as off-ish. But it's, it's still throwing off my feng shui. And I'm not sure if this is going to be one of those where they just, they release a repaint of a previous figure just to, to placehold the name while they work on a later figure, uh, which, which they've done at various times, or if this is going to be the version that will be the update and then that's it for however many years. Um, so uh, uh, more more pressuring yourself into getting your ideal version. Uh, right, right. Which uh, I think it was I think it was KFC that did the uh, mm-hmm. did the third party cassettes, mm-hmm. uh, which which uh, captured prey and Mega Toy Fan had the repaints of uh, like like the shattered glass versions, uh, which th- those were outstanding. But uh, when, when I got those, like, like we were talking about third party, they were more expensive, and that early on. In, in KFC stuff that I don't feel the quality was necessarily there. I, I actually had to, to reattach a ball joint on, uh, on one of them. The uh, real flimsy. Well, yes. not flimsy, just I would say brittle. <laughs> uh, yeah, which I, 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 I assume it, that they've, the quality has improved since then. I mean, I've, I've not really got into third party much at all ever. Um, but I mean, I'm looking forward to Slam Dance. Uh, but it's not necessarily what I would have preferred, uh, as much as I'm glad to see that character return. Uh, but I'm also disappointed in the fact that, uh, Skytread, Flywheels, whatever, does not have the individual robot modes, like, uh, yeah. uh, Battle Trap, Battle Trap hat. So right. For Slam Dance, Jim, do you feel, since it's one of your favorite characters, you said, and you have yeah. a sentimental attachment, I do. Do you feel obligated to get the new one or would you Absolutely. rather get one that you would you know really like oh no I'm, it's totally on my list I'm, I'm going to get it got it that's a good point to make because mm-hmm. i'm feeling i'm feeling like that right now because um you know i've wanted a figure i wanted a minerva figure for a really long time and we're finally getting one in that third party figure and i don't oh. think i like it really at all but I am very tempted to buy it. I think it might still happen, even though so, I don't like yeah. how it looks. But, but some so of those kind we've of characters. About, <clears throat> uh, we've been talking about you know pressure from other people or pressure from the community at large. But you know, Anna, your Minerva and, and Jim, your Slam Dance sound kind of like you know internal pressure because it's that character. You, you feel like you need to have it. You, yeah. But you you are giving yourself that pressure rather than. You know, well, say, I'm saying that's the best figure ever, so you need to have it. Well, with 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 me, um, one of the main focuses of my collection is not only uh, reacquiring uh, some of the, the vintage uh, heritage figures that I had in my youth, but also uh, having uh, at least the the, the the best representation of those characters that I can get in an updated form and, and more modern, uh, more modern articulation, design, what have you. Uh, like, I've, I've got the I've got the movie... Hey, Rat Bat. Nice. It's an orange Rat Bat, but... That's Wing Thing, man. That's the best cassette ever. Hey. Okay. 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 Subtly, um, sub- subtly tries to peer pressure. Right. But, like, like I've, oh, I've got man. the movie Bludgeon, the movie Axer, you know, which is mm-hmm. the, the redeck, repaint, remold, whatever, of, uh, of Lockdown. You know, I've got, uh, I don't know, uh, just, well, all, all sorts of different figures, but the, 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 the focus is of those few figures that I had in my youth. Aside from that, it's primarily been, you know, Combiner Wars and maybe, maybe the City Bots, things like that. And more recently, I've fallen in love with the Studio Series. 
you know, I've got, I've got select figures from there because I actually like the movie designs. Maybe not all of them. Maybe not all of them. And some of the movies are kind of hit and miss, but overall the designs are just outstanding. I'm getting so much pressure on that because I just, I hate the movie designs. I hate them so much. But all you people keep buying them and saying these Studio Series figures are so good. I keep hearing, like, oh, this is incredible. It transforms yeah. so neat. And then I buy it. I still hate well, it. You know, yeah, and, and I a lot, get a, shock lock out of it. A, so. a lot of folks are like I did get shock lock out of that. They're like, you know, they look like tinfoil or they, they look like whatever the reason is. But if you look at it, look, look at uh, what, what, what's, what's her name? Shatter here the, uh, from the Bumblebee movie. I mean, if yeah. you look at it, You've got sections that form kind of wings. You got the the roof in the back. You've got the the chest as the as the hood. You've got wheels on the legs. I mean, it's it's kind of a callback to the to the original Prowl, Blue Streak, and Smoke Screen designs in a lot of ways. It just you know a lot of the the excessive detail that you wouldn't normally find on say a say a Chug figure or a G1 blocky figure. Because they're so heavily detailed, it can kind of give the appearance of being kind of wadded up tinfoil or whatever. It, it's 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 visually busy, and I think that's what a lot of folks aren't necessarily used to because uh, Armada or G1 or, or you know uh, classics were were so were, were, were so uh, if not blocky then then uh, plain. They, they weren't as uh, detailed or, or panel lined or whatever the term you want to use, you know. And I think that that can be a, a distraction for for some folks. But me, I, I like it. Like like Dropkick here. I don't know if you saw earlier in the show. I was actually uh, applying some nail polish to the, some of the ball joints. <laughs> I hey, we have an extra person. Uh, but th- this I think is one of the best figures, and it is shelf warming like mad. It looks, it looks garbage, Jim. I'm sorry. There you go. There's your favorite figure that the fandom hates. <laughs> it, it is That's an incredible right. transformation. Honestly, I think it's one of the best transformations uh, out of the deluxe <laughs> studio series without being overly complex, like, say, the VW Bug uh, Bumblebee. I hate that one. I mean, with, with, with the Bumblebee, you got to fight to get the uh, I hate it so much. The, I hate it the so much. roof to snap back into its into its position for the robot mode, and then you got to fight to get it back out. With it. I mean, just, I'm afraid I'm going to break it. I've come to your side on that bumblebee, Christian. After I've owned yes. it for a little while, I hate it yes. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, it, it, it looks good in both modes. I, I, I'm kind of like you, Anna, where, I, you know, I bought a lot of the studio series now, and the, the shine's kind of worn off a little bit for me. Not enough, like, I, I think studio series is a huge step up from prior toy lines uh, for the movies, uh, for me at least. And so I, I like the newer ones a lot more, but I I think I'm kind of almost set with my movie collection and I'm I'm done. I filled up my shelf and I'm I'm going to be uh I don't think I'm going to be doing like the Devastator and and all those other ones that you guys are doing. So you'll, you'll change your tune oh, when I'm, I finish my Devastator. I'm, I'm totally getting the Devastator. I've got the uh what is I'm going to peer pressure you into getting it. Uh, Rampage. This is so the you're pressure. not going to get me. Pressure. Not gonna get me. Yeah. Well, it looks like we've got I mean, you know a lot of different ways that we get pressure, yeah. and, you know, whether it's ourselves or whether it's the community or our close friends. There's a lot of ways that we we change the way we collect for others or for ourselves. It's kind of neat. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing you know with this is is just recognizing it in yourself, and you know just tr- like thinking about it before you actually go and press that buy button, so that you're not just you know like get you know the in the rush of keeping up with whatever or keeping up with the excitement so i feel like that's the 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 biggest thing is is keeping up with the transes um is (laughs) is making sure to you know if you're gonna buy the figure you know wait and you know you might wait a little while and see you know is it is it still the figure that you want after all the hype dies down and and all that type of thing so because i mean you can know a lot of these figures you usually can get them um later unless it's fans toys phoenix but uh, otherwise uh, but they usually reissue them and all that yeah i was gonna say that that's been reissued now a couple times and all that so but 
Well, I think we probably beat this uh, topic to the ground here. So uh, I guess, do we want to go ahead and do sponsors, uh, Jim? I think we could probably mention the sponsor or three. I can I can think of one right offhand. That would be uh, CapturePrey.com, who offers great toys at great prices and great service. Uh, CapturePrey.com. And... Uh, Christian, can you think of any others? I think that's it. But you can catch us on TFLB microcasters on Tuesdays at 10 Eastern. Don't we have a Don't we have a discount code for somewhere? We do uh, not. We not anymore. Oh, I yeah. must be out of the loop. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, but we are we are looking for other uh, sponsors. So if there's anybody that uh, is is interested, uh, let us know. Um, uh-huh. But then also, if you like what we do, uh, you know, we also uh, are on Patreon. Um, so if you want to go to patreon.com slash TFYLP, and uh, there are um, options from a dollar all the way on up, uh, you know, if you want to do that extra support, if you like what we do here and all that. So, um, you know, again, you know, we have hosting costs for the, the website and uh, for, for the podcast. And so, you know, that's really the main thing is, is because, you know, we want to at least try to break even with what we do, uh, so that we're not spending money on stuff. So, uh, that's, that's the main reason for, for the Patreon. So, uh, hey, collectors spending money. What? <laughs> well, we're not, we're not spending Last that week. on, on money, but, or I'm <laughs> sorry, on figures. It's, it's on like server costs and, and things like right. that. So, but, yeah, just to just to be clear, so I know yes, there was it's, an issue. it's not our figure budgets. It's <laughs> the, I, I believe there was an issue a couple years ago with a certain reviewer that was was doing that. So anyway, <laughs> uh, we uh, yeah we, we won't talk about that. But uh, diabolical. We, we are we you know it's mainly just for for server costs and things like that. So um, and I guess again, uh, like you said, um, check out Microcasters ten o'clock. Do we know what we're doing this week? <laughs> Uh oh. Is my is my Yeah, so if we had more money, Lucas wouldn't have froze just now. Yeah. <laughs> Please donate. <laughs> uh yeah, so in order uh, so, so Lucas doesn't die. <laughs> do we know what we're doing on TF Oh I guess this episode's ahead anyway, so don't worry about it. But yeah, check out check out uh, yet. Yeah. Yeah. This theoretical like two weeks in the future. So anyway. Well, anyway, uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, joining us tonight, and we will see you next week. See you later. Later. This is...